I'm Whit Wilkerson. Um, the first time I was able to come down to the Panky Institute was actually when it was at the DuPont Plaza in 1982. And uh, Dr. Panky was very involved at that time and would do a philosophy session at pretty much every course that was held at the Institute. And he was a tremendous mentor to many of us that were very fortunate to know him personally. And I think he would be very proud about what we're going to be talking about tonight because he was a big believer in health, uh, not just oral health, but whole health. And he loved to talk about things like nutrition and fitness. And um, we had many lectures on these topics back in the early days of the Institute. And so um, I'm real excited to be able to share with Laura Hooper and uh, speak with you all about some of the new things that we're learning. Laura, why don't you say hi to everybody? Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. And my background with Pinky, I just have always worked for a Pinky dentist. So being a hygienist for 30 years, I say that's just been grounded with me and my practice with dental hygiene. But Dr. Wilkerson, you spoiled me. I got to go become a visiting faculty member and experience staying there, the Miami facility. It was just amazing. I think I was just in awe that the community, how we come together um, to, and just work things out. Like actually what I say, real life questions, right? The things that you don't always have the opportunity to connect with. And that just blew my mind that we had that opportunity to spend with the community that came to visit with us. And so I'm so looking forward to that experience and sharing our knowledge with each other, because I think it's unlike anything else to be able to do that um, as a community. So I hope people who haven't gone will think about coming and think about just the opportunity that that brings as a community to feel that and really collaborate with each other. It's an amazing experience. So I am just looking forward to that and just want to welcome everyone tonight for being on. Yeah, thanks, Laura. And um, it's such a pleasure and an honor to partner with you um, in teaching. And so why don't we get started? Um, what we wanted to talk about tonight was um, really helping us focus in on an opportunity, a golden opportunity, perhaps we might say a once in a lifetime op opportunity that we have in dentistry uh, to both as dentist partner with our dental hygienist to create what I believe can be the superstar team in all of not just dentistry, but in all of medicine. And so we'll explain uh, what we mean by that as we go through together. But um, one of the things that we wanna just challenge each other on tonight as we get started is what are the possibilities? What are the possibilities for the future? Um, I know when I signed up to go to dental school, you know, I was hoping I could really have a tremendous impact on people's lives. And Laura, I'm sure you felt the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's what drives most of us in this industry to enter into dentistry. And I remember last year, Laura and I in July or August were down at the Institute uh, teaching a course that we're going to teach again this July. And one of the dentists walked up to us and he said, the reason I'm here to learn about an expanded model of dentistry is because I'm ready to quit. He said, I just am not enjoying getting up and going to the office each day. Um, I've lost my passion for dentistry and um, just need to be rejuvenated. And fortunately, I would say at the end of that class, he very much felt that way. But maybe there's times when we need to ask ourselves, you know, what is the future that's bright and how can we create our own bright future? Let's talk about possibilities because I think that that is not such a unique story. We're we're telling a story, but I want to give that really person courage and the ability to be authentic to really come up to us and say, "Hey, this is inspiring. This is making me want to do something different. This 
makes me want to do dentistry again. And I think that's what this is all about as a community is that we lock arms with each other, no matter where we are in our journey, whether it's the beginning, the middle, getting lost somewhere in the messy middle, I call, or at the end that we can help one another um, through that process. So for me, we started talking about a wellness center. What is a wellness center? Well, one of the things would be that if we looked at dentistry, and I want us to accept this challenge tonight, if we looked at dentistry as a specialty of medicine, as a specialty of oral medicine and oral health, understanding that the mouth is the portal to the whole body, and so much of what happens throughout the whole body is initiated at the mouth, either what comes in or what happens in the mouth. Um, and so if we looked at it that way, rather than, and I hate to even say this out loud, but rather than seeing ourselves as stepchildren to real doctors, and maybe that's a psychological issue for us to deal with, and that is, is that we are real doctors, we are real health professionals. And so if the dentist who looks at himself or herself as an oral medicine specialist and working with a dental hygienist who pictures himself in the same way. And so tell us how you picture your role, um, Laura, as you think about your practice of, of dentistry. Yeah, you can see there that I say the health conscious hygienist, but I truly believe prevention is at the heart of every hygienist. We really are there to give, right, to help. I think that's why we want to be educators, whether it's about, you know, how to brush and flush your teeth to, you know, talking about nutrition, what we should be eating. I think we just want to help by our natures. What kind of drives us to go into these careers is that we are more on the health conscious side and want to help people be well, be healthy um, and prevent these diseases. And to me, that could be the absolute core of a dental practice. Instead of just saying it's oh, a uh, hygiene practice on its own over here, and then we have restorative and maybe we have some airway or things like, no, this is a whole wellness center. We work together, we integrate, we talk and collaborate within the practice so that we can create wellness um, completely and looking at the whole patient together that we're not isolated. But I love that you bring that up. You know, everyone brings up uh, the movie, you know, <laughs> from Las Vegas. I'm not going <laughs> to name that crazy movie, but if we go back far enough and maybe what, you know, this year somebody else does is that that's not how dentistry started. It actually started that you went to medical school first, right? And you got your medical degree and then you went on and specialized in dentistry. And I just want to tell all dentists out there to start thinking of themselves that way, that it is a specialty of medicine and we're trying to bring that back and for hygienists to understand that so that they can understand their role in working in that type of environment and really understanding why we're looking at the whole patient and our passion really is about creating health. And so I always say that for me, it's not so much looking at, of course, I want to treat disease, but really I want to look at every patient and say, how can I create health? How can I help this patient be healthier? Yeah, that's great. And um, one of the things that I'm always reminded of is if you are an ophthalmologist, would you be consider concerned about whether your patient had diabetes? And of course, the answer is, well, absolutely, because you can go blind from diabetes. And so the same would be asked of us in dentistry. If you're in dentistry, are you concerned about whether your patient may be diabetic? And the answer would be, well, of course, because diabetes exacerbates periodontal disease. And in fact, periodontal disease exacerbates uh, diabetes. But there's so much more. Uh, now that we think back of what we've observed so obviously through the years, things like, well, you need to be pre-medicated before you have your teeth cleaned so you won't create a bacterial infection, a bacteremia in your bloodstream that could affect the health of your heart or could affect the health of your replaced joint, whether it's a knee or a hip. Don't we see that there's a connection there be, be, between infections 
uh, that can spread through the body, starting with the mouth that all of medicine recognizes. And yet we've really not addressed it. And so um, these are some of the things that we want to look at our patient, yes, as a dental patient, but we want to look at them as a whole person. And so, in fact, I'm going to suggest, Laura, and I know you will, that we look at ourselves as a whole person first. So what is your work paradise? Um, and why don't we talk about that a little bit, Laura? Yeah, you know, this just hits home for me as people understand my journey as a dental hygienist. You know, one of the biggest impacts for me is really understanding that heart attacks are our number one killer in this country. In fact, more women die of heart disease than all cancers combined. If you haven't heard that statement, I want that to just sink in. Because I know as a female, if I kind of watch media or, you know, you're on Instagram and all these things, majority of things that we hear are about cancer, but women need to understand that it really afflicts us and it is our number one killer. What's startling is that half, half of all those heart attacks are triggered by an oral bacteria in our mouth. And so for me as a dental hygienist, when I learned this, it really shook me to my core when one of my dear patients who is active in our community, had seen him for many years, I found out had dropped dead of a sudden heart attack. And I say it shook me to my core because when I heard that statistic, I knew this patient had active periodontal disease. I knew they had pathogens and raging bacteria in their mouth that was putting them at risk, yet we didn't do anything about it. And to me, that's the impact that we can make is that if more of us knew just by some of these simple tests, simple saliva tests, simple screenings we're gonna talk about tonight, that we can have a huge impact on saving millions and millions of lives. And that's really how I started to look at my work paradise. You know, I wanted to go to work. I wanted to make a difference. And I started with myself of testing and then started to say, okay, what does work paradise look like? What would I enjoy doing? How would that really call out my mission that I feel like I'm giving back to my community? And so it is really your why is what we're asking. I would like everyone to take a minute and drop their why. Or, you know, why would you create a work paradise? What does that look like for you? Whether it's a legacy, whether it's changing the culture of your practice, whether it's impacting the community. For me, that was a huge piece. These are my family and friends. How could I impact it in a positive way? Yeah, that's great. And for me, uh, a big part of the puzzle was... Um, beginning to understand how I can be healthier and then sharing that same information that was so valuable to me with my patients who really are our family. And I found that we got into lots of wonderful discussions of very appreciative people who have a high level of respect for us, just like any other health professional that they know, uh, they trust us maybe even more. And so, um, we want to be inspired. So let's talk about that a little bit more, Laura. Yeah. yeah. So in being inspired, why don't we make a commitment together as Dr. Pankey would urge us to do. And that is part of the balance cross has to do with our health too. And um, not only knowing our work and knowing our patient and, and, uh, but also knowing ourselves and um, being the person that we want to advocate our patients to be as well or to become. And so talk a little bit about that, Laura. Yeah, I think it's just so you said, a lot of times we're in need of taking care of ourselves. I say it's like the airplane, right? They tell us, put your mask on first so you can help others next to you. And if you have a young child or your children are traveling with you, I think as a parent, we really kind of... Take, took me back, right? Because I want to help my child first, but what help am I going to be if I'm slumped over? And I think the same thing here is that being authentic, sharing our heart, sharing our own health journeys, and starting with ourselves on how we can be healthier. 
really then inspires others because it comes from internal, right? When they see that we're getting healthier or we can share what we've done on our journey, I think really inspires others then to do the same and to be able to have that conversation. But I truly believe that the majority of us can love work, can be inspired to go to work, whether it's inspiring because we're sharing our own journey to hopefully impact others or we're having that conversation because we're inspired and fulfilled to help other people, whether it's from peritoneal disease to heart disease to Alzheimer's, some of our top inflammatory diseases that are affecting our community. I remember Dr. Pankey's quote that's actually on the wall outside of Masters Hall that says, in his work with thousands of dentists, and I've heard him say this personally in lectures, that he would consider that 2% of the dentists that he worked with and, and um, taught were what he would consider masters, true masters of dentistry and, and total health. 8% he considered um, adept. 36% he said were continuous students, which I would say each one of us on this webinar are at least that. But then he said 54% are indifferent or I, I might call it uninspired. And so we want to inspire you as Dr. Panky would to be in that upper echelon and say, I'm never gonna stop learning. I'm never gonna stop growing. I'm never gonna stop sharing and teaching as long as I'm in practice and helping other people. And so let's get healthy together. Let's share that health story with those that we serve and be inspired together. So drop a yes in the chat if you're in or a commitment, just say I'm committed. Yes, I'm in. Love to see those. Drop those in the chat for all those with us tonight. And let's start talking about this. So wait, kick it off. All right. So let me ask you a question. As you look um, at what's on the screen, what do you see? And I'll give you a second to look at that. I guess someone might say, well, I see a red, big red dot. And now let's make a change here. And now what do you see? And you say, well, now I see a big white box. But if we go back, Laura, uh, go back one, wasn't that big white box there all the time? And of course the answer is it is, but we may be zeroed in on the red dot or the red circle and miss it. So let's show something that compares to that as we go forward here. And I wanna ask you, what do you see? And we might say, well, I see an open mouth. And what if I told you that that open mouth, also that person is raising their tongue as high as they possibly can. Now, do we see more? And let's, go forward here and see what we can observe. Oh, look at that. We have a tongue tie. A tongue tie of that severity is highly associated with an airway breathing and sleep problem. And what else can we see, Laura? A scallop tongue. A scallop tongue has about a 70% association with airway breathing and sleep issues. What else do we see? Oh, where is the uvula? It's down the back of the throat a so-called malampati 4 or a high risk soft palate obstructing airway in the back of the throat. And what else do we see? Oh, the upper arch is constricted, isn't it? It's omega shaped. And when it's omega shaped, that's an indicator that the tongue has not filled the vault as well as uh, helping to establish a broad base for the nasal airway. So that's highly associated with airway and breathing disorders. Is there anything else we can see? Well, if you were able to look directly, you would observe that teeth six, seven, and eight have wear on this 21-year-old individual that is into dentin because she's been going out edge to edge and even into crossover position, ruxing at night. Why in the world would you go past the envelope of function past edge to edge and the crossover continuously to the point where at 21 you've worn into dentin. Could it be because you're trying to open up the back of your throat so you can breathe? 
this young 21 year old TMD patient that appeared in my office saying that she thought the week before that she was dying in her sleep and went to the emergency room and was diagnosed with a panic attack at the emergency room and given a sedative for that actually had undiagnosed severe sleep apnea that we were able to diagnose in the dental office just looking in the mouth. This is what we're talking about when we're saying we want to look beyond the scope of what we're used to into the things that can really not only help us with doing better dentistry and better diagnosis, but also potentially saving lives. Well, and this is really where that wellness center comes together, where our hygiene team and our dentist team are working together because many times we're capturing these photos, we're doing the scans, we're starting those initial conversations, or what I say, asking those good questions, right? Maybe about sleep, or we're asking them, you know, do you catch yourself clenching and grinding, right? All of these things is how then we can implement in working together is that we're both seeing the same things and the patient's hearing that message throughout. Yeah, and this is the classic TMD patient that we've been seeing for years and years and years for me almost 42 years now that come in saying, I clench and grind in my sleep. My muscles are sore in the morning. Sometimes I have headaches and I feel terrible. I'm tired all the time. I don't sleep well. I wake up at night and they've been telling us sleep, sleep, sleep. And we've been thinking splint, splint, splint. And so our eyes are being open to a whole new world of possibilities for helping people solve their problems. And we love that. So truly, we're just inviting all of you to look at health through a different lens. I say every time as we put our loops on, can we look through a different lens and see beyond that dot, maybe see beyond what the patient is there for and take all these things into account. And that's truly working together that we're all looking through this different lens to see our patients. Run through some of the things, Laura, in the next few slides that you've been working with and tell us a little bit more about your background, why it's so unique. Well, I think the first thing is just starting with a different mindset. So we're going to talk about mindset, tool set, and skill set tonight, just introducing right what we work on during the workshop. But Really, I think the, the big piece is mindset. We do have to believe oral is systemic. And I always, you know, joke around. It's not really a joke, but I say we can't cut our heads off at night and lay, you know, our head down on our pillow and go run around all the mamas out there. Yes, I have five children. I would love to lay my head down and get some great sleep and go do the laundry and the dishwasher and everything else. But we have to remember this is a system. We are swallowing. Following. We have vascularity. And so really starting to understand the physiology and the pathways. And so what most people don't know about me is that I'm the first hygienist to actually work for a cardiologist in the same facility at a heart attack and stroke prevention center. Where that journey has taken me is I now work for Dr. Gina Pritchard at the Prevent Clinic, which is concierge medicine is where we are collaborating and looking at both medicine and dentistry together. And we are constantly running through what we call, and you're going to learn, we call them the five biometrics. You're going to be exposed to those tonight. But what I want to inspire others about is that I also speak with Dr. Alan Reisinger across the country with MDVIP because physicians are looking for these dental teams to take care of their patients. So if nothing else, I just want to inspire you that this is a trend, this is happening, and it's a giant movement going on in our country. And I wanna share a little piece of that with you tonight. We'll dive deep during the workshop, but look what's happening across the country. In fact, our American Heart Association, you can see here in January of 2024, um, January 16th, they released this initiative and it's going to be a four year initiative. And I hope you're all reading my slide here. But what I want you to take away is that the American Heart Association wants us to educate our patients about the bacteria in the mouth that can travel through the bloodstream. 
to other parts of the body. And so they're asking us to have this conversation. So really, that's the big initiative. Are we just educating patients, having the conversation, taking blood pressure, going over their medical history and letting them know, hey, this is why we look at your medical history. This is why we take your blood pressure is because there is this connection we call the oral systemic connection. What I get so jazzed up about is that we have this in collaboration with Delta Dental. People always ask, well, what do the insurance companies think about this? Well, Delta Dental is behind this initiative to help educate our patients. So you're going to see this more and more. Also want to let you know, United Healthcare released in November of 2023, just at the end of last year, how they're going to start acknowledging salivary codes like 417 for uh, 0418, 0419. And so they're also starting to take movement into that. We know that Aetna did a huge study with 116,000 patients, and they just looked at, hey, if patients had some type of paradigm service, so any 4,000 code in your office, and they had diabetes, or they had heart disease, or they had what we call the cerebral vascular disease. So think brain health, right? Stroke, diabetes, and heart attacks. Those patients, if they had any type of R4000 paradigmal code, they track that those patients on average, right, reduce their risk of other complications and other medical services that they need by 50%. And that transitioned into money savings by the insurance company. Why Aetna did that is that they could show that the average patient was anywhere between forty dollars to $50,000 that they had to pay out less. So the insurance companies are taking note. They're understanding this oral systemic connection. And we want to share that, right, this is a movement. And like I always say, Dr. Wilkerson, it's just really fun for you and I to be on this front end, right? Rather than being, I say, on the back end. And this initiative is happening. We want more and more of us, right, to start coming in now that the groundwork has been laid for us and that, right, we have the backing of not only the medical community, but also the insurance companies are starting to pay attention. In fact, and, what I want to- Can I just throw in, can I just throw in, uh, Laura, uh, something that we're excited about, and that is the American Dental Association has also just jumped on board and they have asked us to uh, put together a symposium that will be held June tw June 21st and 22nd at the ADA headquarters in Chicago on Michigan Avenue. And the title of that two-day symposium will be Dentistry's Role in Complete Health. The immediate past president of the ADA, Dr. George Shepley, the president of the ADA, Dr. Linda Egger, and the uh, 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 president-elect of the ADA, Brett Kessler, are all super excited to pursue this and spread this throughout the dental community all over the United States. And they all three are gonna be participating in that symposium at ADA headquarters that I'm chairing and that Laura's gonna participate in. And so um, there is momentum. You need to get involved now, folks, because this is happening. This train is pulled out of the station and we want you as the Panky community, as the leaders in dentistry, to be on the front lines knowing all this ahead of time so people aren't asking you questions and this is news to you but you you've already invested and learned these things so that you can be the one that's doing the educating so go ahead laura tell us about this well it has everything to do with that because as these initiatives are rolling out and we're going to be participating and spreading the word and educating is that you actually have a tool set, right? You're going to have a skill set, but tool set. And what I enjoy so much is that the American Heart Association not only made the initiative, but they're actually giving us tools to use in our practice. And that's something that we coach on, we teach. How do we use these? How can we use them with communication at the chair? But also I want you to hear is this is a great way 
of creating that culture within your community, right? Causing the shift, posting things, but look at their top four initiatives. I know you might have to get close to your screen, but I want you to see here, what are the top four here? And look at this first one. It is all about how to manage blood pressure, right? So I hope most of you are taking blood pressure. If not, this is an easy start. And they give the numbers there. Love taking blood pressure and circling which category here. You can see it's color-coded. Yeah, where is the patient lying? What was their number? And we can write right on it so they can see where they should be and they can see where they really are. And those are things that they can even then communicate with their physician. Then the second one that we see here is look at this healthy sleep. So all of my airway people, I hope you're clapping out there, can give a little clap in that chat. Look at that initiative. And if you're not doing that, it's just a great way to say why we're looking in the mouth. You saw our whole, what do you see looking through a different lens of shifting from just clenching and grinding that we we're talking about splinting to, hey, is that a sleep issue? And this just really helps reinforce our patient why we're looking at sleep, why we're having a sleep conversation. And then probably one of our favorite topics, Dr. Wilkerson, is to manage blood sugar. I do want to pause there because you're on the ADA task force, sugar task force. Tell us just a glimpse about that because this is such a huge thing in dentistry with it being bi-directional. Yeah, absolutely. We, um, as uh, the president of the ADA last year, George Shepley, made it his personal agenda that would once and for all start making movement on this subject of sugar that we've talked about for years and years and done very little about as or as a part of organized dentistry. And so we have a task force that I've been asked to be part of that is very proactively trying to find other uh, uh, associations to collaborate with and to make public statements and initiatives, working with the government, working with universities and academics, working with educators, working with clinicians at all levels. And so it's not a quick process, as you can imagine, but this subject of sugar, refined carbs, and um, the highly processed foods is something that we're looking at. We're looking at school programs and states and and uh, legislatures and things like this. So it's very exciting. And there'll be some great initiatives coming out soon through the ADA. And of course, we always talk about, you know, smoking cessation programs. But then you can see below that just how we're always talking about nutrition, understanding cholesterol, how that works with periodontal disease. We do know that the bacteria can impact our lipid profiles. And then of course, just healthy lifestyle and weight management. But they're giving us this tool set that I say that we can easily then have a conversation with our patients and we don't have to memorize it. It's all right there easily and readily available for us. And it is called Life's Essential Eight. You can look at that. They have them on their website, but I love always just sharing that because this is part Part of that movement that we're going to be seeing in dentistry. But that's not new, right? Dr. Wilkerson, you can talk it, it is. This is not new. The buzzword in medicine today, and you're probably familiar with this, is inflammation. Inflammation is seen as a driving force behind all the chronic diseases that we see so commonly in the Western world today. And of course, starting with a pro-inflammatory diet, a lack of of uh, physical activity, exposure to toxins, levels of stress that are very high and create inflammation. Poor sleep um, is a huge driver of inflammation. But inflammation is something that we should be talking about all the time. And of course, in dentistry, we know inflammation, don't we? Because we look at it very readily on most of our patients as we're doing our examinations and we see those swollen uh, puffy gum tissues. Here's what I wanna challenge you um, as a dental professional is from now on, from this night on, anytime you look in someone's mouth and you see puffy irritated gums that bleed easily, I want you to be thinking this, I wonder what's going on in the rest of their body. It would be no different than if you took an ultrasound of your carotid artery and you saw a lot of plaque there, don't you think that would be a reflection of what's going on all through the body 
not just at the carotid artery. And so it is with this subject of inflammation. But this is the Time Magazine cover talking about inflammation as the secret killer and its relationship to heart attacks and, and cancer and Alzheimer's and how we can fight it. And guess when this was published? Show them, Laura. 2004. 2004. Let me ask you, how much progress have we made as health professionals and in educating the public and in implementing proactive programs to create anti-inflammatory lifestyles in a world in which inflame aging, that is aging that is accelerated as a result of inflammation, is more normal than unusual. And so I think that's a great place to challenge ourselves and say, you know, I'm going to make it my goal that I anti-inflame age my life and all those whose lives that I touch. Um, how about you, Laura? <laughs> Absolutely. The number one place to start. And that's why we brought tonight that we want to talk about these strategies, that we have five proactive strategies for really creating healthier practitioners and healthier practices. And ultimately, I say healthier profits. I mean, we say healthier profits, healthier patients. We know when we do the right thing, the money will come. But I truly believe when we do the right thing for ourselves and we feel good, we can't help but sharing. And that's like wildfire in the practice. But I say it becomes wildfire with our patients. And there is a complete business model that you and I get into. I don't want to ignore that for those who are questioning that because it's all together, right? It, to me, that's just the icing on the cake is that we get to make money doing what we love. So let's talk about the five strategies. What are those? And I'm going to give a little shout out to the doctor that I work for, Dr. Gina Pritchard, because she really came up with these, we call them the five biomarkers, but they're really for us, the five strategies for the wellness center. What five things can we be doing, can we be screening for and even testing for in our wellness center in the dental practice? And so the first one is breathing. The second one is biome. And we talk about the oral microbiome, but we know that it's connected to the GI microbiome and the biomes throughout the body. But build up, we're going to show you what that is. And Dr. Wilkerson alluded to that with his carotids. But then we look at the blood and we're going to show how in dentistry, where we can start with those blood markers and then the body. And for us, a lot of that is where we started. What do we see anatomically? Are we actually looking at the structures and things like that? So love for you to memorize the five Bs. Those are that are going to be in the workshop. We're going to hit you hard with these five Bs. Try to memorize them. Breathing, biome, build up, blood, and body. So let's take a look at those. Your favorite one, Dr. Wilkerson, is breathing, which I say if we're not breathing, we're probably not here any longer on earth. It is one yeah. of our essentials. It certainly has become one of my favorite topics because my role in dentistry and working with Dr. Pete Dawson for all of these years and seeing so many patients come in from all over the country and beyond to solve their problems, uh, often being sent from other dentists that are unsure how to solve these problems. The understanding of breathing and sleep disorders has been a giant breakthrough in our ability to diagnose the cause and the why behind many of the TMD, the Bruxing, uh, the fatigued patients that we see so often. And so um, we're going to, uh, in the workshop that we're planning to have at the Panky Institute in July, we're going to be teaching you how to do home sleep screening. And that would be using high resolution pulse oximetry. As you see on the, the, um, the graphic on the right-hand side is the printout. And then we'll also talk to you about home sleep testing where you would actually get an apnea score. Um, both look very similar in the design of the, of the testing unit. And then how to apply that into your practice. And uh, when it's appropriate to do dental procedures, such as expanding arches orthodontically um, and uh, working with oral appliances as a way of managing these types of issues, orthognathic surgery, um, and different solutions that may come through a dental means to solve uh, 
a medical problem that is very, very serious and um, something that is so widespread today from really birth all the way through life. And so this isn't just a fat, middle-aged old man's disease, but now we're seeing this in young, young children. Um, and so I'm very excited to spend time with you all in a workshop setting, learning how to do these screenings, testings, and treatments, um, and, and uh, learn more about that all together as a community. And then my absolute favorite, if you don't know, I have five children. They call me the mom bomb. You'll have to come to the workshop to hear that story. But my good friends call me the name that Dr. Wilkerson gave me, the saliva hacker. I love hacking my patient's saliva. There are 10 different saliva tests out there right now. And there's a new one, two new ones I know coming to market as well. But this is the secret. We want to teach you not only how to use these tests, but more importantly, how to interpret them, no matter what test you're using. And again, what Dr. Wilkerson was saying just about the sleep screen and tests, like what are the different treatment options? That's what we're going to do here. Can I look at these tests, no matter what tests, understand what I'm seeing, interpret it, and then yes create those treatment protocols that fit within our practice. So this is always exciting for me because you can learn so many things, not only in dentistry from somebody's saliva, but just like a sleep test, you really can see what's going on with their overall health and a lot of the correlations on their medical history. And so third one is our buildup. And that is when we're looking at what's going on in the rest of the body. If half of heart attacks, we know, 2013, the American Heart Association came out with the paper saying, yes, half, they're going to acknowledge half of heart attacks are triggered by an oral pathogen. And then in 2016, Dr. Bale, Dr. Vigorous, and Dr. Dunneen wrote a paper and actually proved causation of specific bacteria that get into the wall of the artery. I call it acnes of the artery. And we have dental colleagues that are either working with medical doctors doing this, as I do. I work with Dr. Pritchard and we do these CIMTs where Dr. Wilkerson was explaining to you, it's just an ultrasound. We can actually do these in the dental office. We have clinicians doing this and I hope to inspire some hygienists who might want to do this, that they do this and they can actually see, as you see in the lower right here, this yellow, that is what we call, I say plaque in the mouth, plaque on the heart and eventually plaque on the brain. That's that buildup where the bacteria can get into the wall, the artery. And we have cutting edge technology that we can actually now actually see with AI, all the new computer technology with AI, as you look on the right, they actually color code here again, what is going on in the wall of these arteries. So I'm always asking when I work on my team, they're just asking me one question, one question we need to answer. And that is, is the mouth putting this body at risk? And so if somebody has these, what I call acne of the arteries that are ready to rupture, what we need to know is, hey, is this being triggered by a desaturation? We start with the first B, the breathing, which shifts the biome as we lose oxygen and we start breathing through our mouth. We shift from aerobic bacteria to anaerobic. And those are those bad bacteria that then we are either swallowing or they're just crossing over the linings and they can build these plaques. So the buildup becomes a way that we can start to understand this direct impact that we're talking about on the body. One of the things that we have um, been reading in the literature are some interesting analogies of overlaps that we're seeing. So now we're talking about leaky gums and so when we have that breakdown in the intact lining of the sulcus and, and pockets into the bloodstream uh, of these periodontal pathogens, now we have leaky arteries, as Laura is showing you here, where we have unstable plaque building up that actually has been demonstrated to be filled with oral bacteria. And so they could be the culprit in many cases of the formation of these unstable plaques in the arteries. So now we have leaky arteries, and that is also associated with now what's being shown as bacteria from the mouth crossing the blood-brain barrier and actually being directly correlated just in the last year 
through medical uh, science research to show that we can have leaky brain where oral bacteria can affect the formation of amyloid plaques and uh, possibly Alzheimer's. And so we talk about leaky, uh, leaky gums, leaky arteries, leaky brain, uh, and you could also talk about kidneys and livers and all, all uh, uh, organs of the body related to this. So we're, we're labeling this leaky syndrome that, and it can start in the mouth. And so that's why we're having these conversations where you might be thinking to yourself, wow, this sounds almost out of bounds. It, it's really not. And a lot of our cardiology friends are recognizing this and actually we're getting phone calls saying, I need your help because if I'm gonna protect my patient from having a heart attack, they must have excellent oral health. Can you ensure there's no infection in their mouth that could complicate our situation in trying to manage their protected heart? And so this is a huge topic and we're yes on the front lines on this, but it's coming quickly. It's coming very quickly. And I want to give a shout out to our Pinky community for sharing the new article on the statins, how statins, right, reducing these plaques, reducing the cholesterol is actually showing also helping us with the inflammation in the mouth. So our colleagues out there are watching this, those that are understanding it. And I just, you know, give kudos to the Pinky Institute for right sharing that information and constantly staying on the cutting edge and understanding this oral systemic connection. Right. In gonna... fact, that was sent out by Dr. Lee Brady, actually. <laughs> she She's distributed on it. Yeah, she's All on right. top. So we got breathing, we got biome, we got build up, and then we're going to go to blood. And for me, this can look different in every practice that maybe we're starting with blood pressure. If you're not taking blood pressure, just how we start from the American Heart Association said, this is the place to start and letting them know that the bacteria can actually increase one's blood pressure. We know there's blood sugar and you can do a quick glucose to an A1C to we're going to be seeing here that all these new uh, companies, we know Dexcom, you can see the monitor there, the continuous glucose monitor, they're going to start releasing those for over the counter sometime this summer that we've heard about. And then what I work with is Dr. Gina Pritchard is that we look at these blood panels and again, I just want to share and inspire some of the possibilities when we look at this, and I know it's hard to see here, but we teach you this inflammatory panel, and there's really about four key markers, but I'm just going to give a shout out that you kind of understand, like this first one is called myeloperoxidase, it's an enzyme in the wall of the artery, and we see it's red here on this patient. That has a direct correlation, we know, to silent abscesses. Of course, it has a correlation to peridolsis because it's the bacteria that gets in the bloodstream that can increase this. The second one is called LPPLA2, and you learn about that. A lot of people call it plaque 2. Again, it's another enzyme that directly affects the walls of our vessels. And when this is high, we know it has a number one correlation to peritoneal disease. So again, it's pointing to those oral infections that we have. And I just want to point out the third one before we move on, and that's this ADMA. And you can see here that uh, dimethyl arginine is the inverse relation to nitric oxide. We're going to be talking lots about nitric oxide, but we can see on a blood panel when it's high over 100, this patient isn't making nitric oxide. And Dr. Wilkerson, we talk a lot about that, how it goes back to our very first B with breathing. So a lot of on this blood we'll see on these panels, but I just wanted to briefly share that with everyone, what we do when we collaborate, but we can start simple steps with just blood pressure, talking about blood sugar and what that looks like. And then we can move into body. And I say that's our CBCT, right? We can actually see, I always ask, can the patient anatomically even breathe? Can they even do that nasal breathing? Again, those continuous glucose monitors, we can look what is the body doing? How is it handling, right? The load that we put on it from what we're eating, our lifestyle, our diet. And now we have so much technology on body composition. I know when Dr. Wilkerson, I wear my aura ring. I know you do some things. Yeah. This is a big topic. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so much that you can read and understand. And um, we want us as a, a profession of oral medicine to be very familiar with all that's available. So um, no, we're not cardiologists, uh, but do we understand systemic inflammation like we understand oral inflammation? Well, I think we should. That should be part of our basic education. We should be able to have informed conversations with people where we can, with some expertise, explain these things, recommend you know, proactive ways uh, for people to pursue getting healthy, working in collaboration with the rest of the medical community, with physicians, in which one of the things we haven't mentioned really, Laura, is how many instances we found physicians are now very interested in working with us because they've never seen a dentist doing the things that we're doing or a dental hygienist having the level of education that we're sharing with them. And yet it's something that can be learned pretty quickly. And so we're excited about that. And we want all of our Panky community to be also up to speed on these things that, you know, give us just a better conversation in, in the medical realm. Perfect. So I always say, hey, let's start here in dentistry, right? We can do blood pressure. We can look at blood sugar, all the great things out there. We can talk about how to get healthy sleep, even if it's teaching sleep, good sleep hygiene. I always want my hygienist to know what are the things that we talk about what good oral hygiene, what's good sleep hygiene and explaining our tests and screening to them. And then of course, the oral microbiome, what is the root cause of these infections? Or more importantly, are they putting their body at risk or are they putting their mouth at risk? We can do these great saliva tests. And then our CBCTs are just fantastic for the body anatomically, what's going on. Can we see that there? And then I say, like you were saying, Dr. Wilkerson, we can keep evolving where we can move into all of these areas as our interests grow, as we want to learn maybe about ourselves getting healthier, because I would say, I know a lot of us deal with stress. A lot of us want to eat better. A lot of us want to move more, right? And we talk about these things in the practice, how we can help each other. And so I say, these are then the areas we can eventually move into. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I just feel like if we want to be the most respected specialty in all of medicine, then we have to be informed. We have to know what the cutting edge uh, things are that relate to diagnosis and actually isn't being an excellent physician, being a great diagnostician. And um, I'm concerned that in the history of dentistry, we worked a lot very empirically. Uh, we haven't done a lot of testing historically in dentistry. Um, we've done a lot of guesswork. We've tried a lot of things just to see how's that doing for you? Are you feeling better? Is that splint working for you? You know, is that cleaning helping you to bleed less? But really, the amount of testing and diagnosis that goes in front of that has been not as high a level as we should. And so we're committed to that and to helping us as a community to catch up and even go beyond, go to the leading edge. And so the things that are coming out are unbelievable and we're researching that every day. And so we wanna share that with, with you all uh, so that you pick it up very, very quickly. And I don't know if anyone caught in the middle of the screen, that is my test. I started with myself. I know you have too, Dr. Wilkerson. Yes. And it took me a little while to get all those boxes green over there. I'm not going to lie. It's sometimes eye opening. Yeah. What does it take to get ourselves healthier so we can help our patients? But I wanted to share that, yes, I'm trying to be younger internally than my biological age. And so, yes, I'm constantly monitoring myself with these types of screenings and tests. And that's why we say start with you right? That you can put your oxygen mask on first so that you can help your family, your friends, and your community um, throughout the time that you are as a practitioner really making an impact. 
And so our proactive strategies really are about maximizing breathing. We're just kind of giving you a little snapshot here of some of the things that we cover um, when we talk about that. We're big believers in the nitric oxide and how that works. I know during all of our workshops, Dr. Wilkerson, you make everybody sleep that night with some mouth tape, right? We do our own little biohacking, I call yep. at night and talk about brain health. We look at the biome doing our own uh, salivary diagnostics. Are we at risk? And what are the strategies around that? I love talking about prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics, even talking about, you know, are we healing our oral microbiome? Or are we feeding it and making it worse? We'll get into buildup and some of the key topics around that that we could be doing. And we love sharing some of the hot buttons that are going on. I know just in implants alone in dentistry, we talk a lot about bone health with K2 and D3, but that is so important too in our vascular system that we're actually mobilizing our calcium and building bone in the right places. And so we talk about some of these supplements and things to get healthier from sleep with magnesium to even our methods methylated, right, vitamins that help us with these things. And then we're going to be talking about the blood, right? Here's our five Vs. Yeah. How do we do a blood sugar? What could we help our patients with? What could we tell them to do um, with that as well as blood pressure? I love doing some of the nitric oxide testing to even see if our patient's are able to convert that nitric oxide, but showing things and supplements that we can help them with while they're going through maybe their sleep or breathing with us that can help boost that oxygenation. And then the body, you really get into that. I know with our CBCTs, our sleep screen and right, you know, from appliance to surgery, really talking about all of the options because there is so much information out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, um, extremely exciting and we're just just scratching the surface tonight to um pique your interest because there's so much to talk about so we'll talk about protocols we love help building those protocols for the practices i love to always start we love our fives our five protocols you can just see that snapshot there from what is our cavity protocols to abscesses to how we treat gum disease to our implants and sleep disorder breathing. We want you to walk away with tangible things that you can implement when you return back to the office. That is just so important for us that you can start implementing on day one.